Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Welcome back. Today we're gonna do a tea. <laughs> a tea tasting that is probably long overdue. Mm. Many of you have told us it's one of your favorite, if not your favorite tea. And um, we're excited to do a tasting for it right here today. What are we tasting? <laughs> no, I know, I'm just building suspense right, for right, that. Right, 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 it works. Were you in suspense? Uh, <laughs> Leave a comment if you were. Uh, in home number nine. Ying home number nine. nine. <laughs> Ying home number nine. <laughs> Ying home number nine, that's right. Yes, it sounds fancy, right? Like a sounds Chanel fancy. number five, but this is Ying home number nine. Yeah, stay tuned if you want to hear more about that mysterious name. If you're new to the channel, here at Gen T on our YouTube channel, we do videos about tea travel, tea tastings, how to brew, and much, much more. So click that subscribe button if you want to know whenever we make a new video. And what do you think? Let's dive in? Yeah. Let's dive in. As usual, I'm gonna warm up all the tea vessels. Give it a little rinse too. We've been working out in the uh, Airstream, so we're both super thirsty, really excited to uh, get some tea going here, and even more excited to, to get into some Ying Hong number nine. I actually cannot remember the last time I had this tea. I was about to say, it's been it's a while. Been a while. Mm, I'm gonna have to go with probably the Toronto Tea Festival. Oh, probably. I, mean, I think we had it there. I'm not even sure. Oh, even this smells so good. Mm. Almost like a some sweet yep. floral perfume, that kind of a and you ready know, to wear aroma. And you can even see um, the little the fuzz. orange fuzz in the bottom of the um, in the bottom of the tea caddy. Thank you. Ah, uh, yeah. Still has that nice plummy, uh, plummy hint of chocolate. Mmm, that is really nice. Oh boy, I hope I can. I hope I can stay excited. It really and plum. Stay energetic. Dry, dry plum. Dry, dry plum, plum, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If a. Because uh, I found if you smell the fresh plum, it doesn't have this uh, uh, concentration. Concentration and the and this tart, sort of sticky tartness, yeah. Tart and a sweet fusion. I'm I not, found it's very. I'm not sticky. sure sticky apply, but tart. Yeah, I, I didn't want to point that out. I'm like sticky. But it's sticky, like you know what I mean by like a, just a, a like a no. thick, a thicker aroma. <laughs> oh, right, you know right, 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 right. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. Yes. It's so hard to describe the these things. Fresh fruit that doesn't have those no. Um, no. same with the grape smell vis-a-vis -vis raisin smell mm. is quite different. Mm. Uh, we put a good dose, so I'm gonna just come out quite quickly. Mm. Yeah, I put about four and a half mm. because of the vessel size. I didn't want to be too. I'd rather go a little high. I've got a master infuser here, so there's no issues. Mm. You want to smell? Yeah, I want to smell when okay. when the time is right. Oh, that's hot. When it's hot, it has that really light. This is uh, really hot. Not oh a light God. aroma, but that almost like um. And this sounds wrong, but almost like gasoline vapors. Like the the, the aroma is really coming at you uh, mm. aggressively. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it's not unpleasant. It still has that plummy. <laughs> that what you describe as like that uh, heat, the steam that rushed mm. to your nose. Mm -hmm. The feel reminds me of uh, you know soda drinks. It's the same se sensation in your nose. Mm. 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 I gotta let it cool a bit. It's interesting to me how the liquor aroma, uh -huh. sorry if I cut you off, no, no. the liquor aroma changes from when it's piping hot 
I rarely get the best aroma yes. at that moment. But I think we're gonna. I was going to mm. say something like this. When I smell this, I'm like, I. It doesn't smell anything mm. like what I just smell. It's barely has any smell. On the dry smell. leaf or the, yeah. the humid this, leaf. Because it's really hot and you know, really agitates the nose. I feel like I can feel it more than I can smell it. Mm. But once I take a sip, all that, all that I was smelling on um, the warmed leaf really trans, like uh, transcribe on my tongue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have to. I, I use the boiling water. I literally boil the water, get started, mm. rinse and go. So it's pretty hot. And with any of our teas, I would recommend you do use boiling water, even if you think, oh my gosh, it's a, you know, or, or the hottest, you know, whatever we recommend. Um, and you'll notice for our white tea, it's usually boiling water uh, for pretty much all of them because they are really well made teas and they need that to, to have their essence. The mouthfeel is out there and the, mm -hmm. um, like all the flavor is in the liquid. You will still have a nice brew. It won't taste bad, but you'll be missing out on some of the awesomeness. That's, mm. that's if, the thing. Right. If you were familiar with uh, like Yunnan black tea, this one has a lot of similarity mm. with the Yunnan black tea because this tea cultivar, uh, Inho number no. nine is uh, relatively new. We used to say new, then I realized when I say it's a new tea cultivar, my spectrum is compared to the tea history. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you context know? is everything. Yes. Then for some people, they think it's just a brand new couple of years 2022. ago. 2022! No, no, no. This cultivar is in the 80s. It was uh, uh, developed as stuff. So part of it is actually the Yunnan big leaf cultivar. So it will, it, it has a lot of that notes, but a little bit more cheerful. Yeah, yeah. It's I like, it's like East meets that. Southwest kind of. It's got mm. kind of the best of both worlds. Hmm. A little brighter, a little sweeter than a straight Dian yes. Hong, but still has that crispiness. Mm. Now the temperature come out, come out, sorry, come down mm -hmm. a little bit. It lifts up a bit, mm -hmm. right? feels mm -hmm. a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. The hot temperature give it a little bit of suppression. And I was going to mention earlier, but the um, the the sort of major leap forward for me in tea tasting is that breathe over the liquor in your mouth. So check out the video on how to taste tea. Mm. As cheesy or as simple as that might sound, um, that was a game changer for me. There's some tips that Jen gave me that we put into that video, and the one I'm talking about right now is you get the you take a sip of the liquor, you aerate that. And then you let it rest in your mouth, all around your mouth, all around your tongue. And while it's there, you take a nice breathe in. Be careful not to choke. It's really easy to, to do that. Especially with a hodge. And don't be afraid, you know, to, to have a couple of chokes and to get used to it. It might take you some time. You're probably going to be okay. <laughs> and sometimes I like to hold the liquor in my mouth, not consciously swallow it. I just hold it for a few moments and mm -hmm. you know because we're used to eating and drinking so you subconsciously you're doing that mm -hmm. and let that subconscious swallowness swallowness <laughs> I mean the subconscious swallow uh, pay attention to that feeling I found because you're not uh, focus on I'm drinking this tea, somehow the sensation on the throat would jump out a bit more. Right, right. It, right? it might, get, might get you in touch with um, mouth feel and throat feel and that was sort of, when I was first getting into tea, these terms seem really like, ooh, like uh, almost mythological or are, don't, I don't really know what people are talking about because, because of the, what you were talking about, eating is such a natural second nature thing that you take a lot of the process and maybe the whole process mm. for granted, including tasting. So what you're talking about is taking it, just letting it kind of happen and mm. let it, and bring that back to your consciousness kind of accidentally. So beautiful how you describe it. No, those things really threw me off. Mouth feel, throat feel. Right, uh, right. 
Uh, but none. And I think they, I think they throw a lot of folks for a loop. So that's again why I plug that video on how to taste yeah. tea because for me that was the breakthrough. I was like, okay, yeah. this isn't hocus yeah. pocus. This is real. And for those of you who are like, oh, I'm not a taster, mm -hmm. poppycock. It can, you can totally practice, you can totally learn. It's like everything. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yes, some people will be more talented than others, mm -hmm. but really practice is where it all Conscious goes. practice. Yeah. Uh, because when you said it, it threw me off, well, when I started, I also don't know what mm. my mom was saying. You know, it just sounds crazy. I totally get it. But the more you... Uh, I'm so glad copy. to hear that. Yeah, it's, it's just the same, right? Yeah. It's when we're not trained to sense those uh, as we grown up and one day you start to know, huh, there's a difference. Maybe I pay attention. Slowly, slowly you build up to that. I found this is a little bit like almond. Really? Almond. Mm. Gentle. I wasn't mm -hmm. like on the lid. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Singren's sing yeah. young in yes. particular. Like yes. the Chinese, the Chinese almond almond. Almond. is really more, um, almost Not more nuts. like, it smells more like almond extract for, yes. for Westerners. Like it has that a little bit more edgy sweet almond mm, mm. not oil not oily mm -hmm. almond nut wow that's neat i might have to uh give the notes a little touch up there mm. uh, they, these are some interesting notes that i don't remember being on the website so. yeah. Speaking of the website, of course, you can um, find the link down below in the description if you want to grab some of this tea and try it out. Maybe uh, order it and then pause the video and come back and sip along with us. That's, <laughs> a, that's always fun. If you dig way back into our mm. archive, I think we do have a sip along. So you could even sip along with us twice and see how our perspective has changed. Mm. Now I'm a bit nervous because I haven't watched that video and I have no recollection of what my I was going to say, I don't remember I did a sip along. <laughs> So, no, I'll let you pass it. Patience, patience. <laughs> Just an evening tea, so we set up the camera and mm -hmm. have a moment. Yeah, one way or the other, we were having tea, but we just thought, oh, let's set up the camera and invite mm. these guys over. You guys over. I was worried about this. <laughs> this, I was is, this is what happens with our evening tea often is it's um especially when it's <laughs> when it's good and and just really this is full bodied a really nice mouthfeel. It just brings you it's just very mellowing. Yes. Right? Yes. And, and there's a I was sipping, then I'm like, gotta say something to the camera. <laughs> gotta say something. Yeah, we gotta Someone is watching. Guys, but, um, and then I just keep sipping. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, no, I'm going back in. Mm. Still more of that plum, the, the, the little, I don't want to call it a bite, but that, um, that sort of crispy edge is still there. Really, mm. really bright. Like, a, like you said, cheerful, I think is a really good descriptor. I know it's not a flavor, but it is a cheerful. And the smell is a more like. Um, malty a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm getting a little bit more of a malty. It smells a gentle tartness, but mm. I don't taste the tartness. Yeah, yeah, the tea is uh, just crisp and clean. Mm. I really love fuzzy black teas, um, fuzzy. like Ying Hong. Right. Yeah, with the they, they have like almost like a you know when you get to the bottom of the bag or the or on the bottom of your tea bowl, you can see a little almost like a little brown sugar fuzz or or a little um, dust mm, like that mm. brown you know bl you know white Which tea. Which also give it a gentle brown sugar sweetness. Touch. Yes, it very gives it, gentle. Yep, yep. You, at some point, I don't call that roasty because. It's not quite there, but it has that direction. It's sweet for me in the mm. context of black tea. It's not sweet like honey or maple syrup, 
but it's like that black tea sweetness, you know. You mean black sugar or black tea? No, black tea, like, oh, like just a black tea sweetness right. that um, is different than a green tea sweetness uh, for oh, me. Oh, yeah. It has that Obviously. malty, like you say, it's not quite roasty, but like it has that cooked sweetness flavor, something like that. Mm. Mm. You can even see a little bit of the uh, of the fuzz in the bottom of the cup. Yeah, I always love to see that. Do you know which infusion we're on? This is the second, we're up to number three. Number three. We're gonna go for nine. No, just kidding. Um, <laughs> so I was, as we get ready for infusion number three, I was mm -hmm. remembering the very first time I had this tea is really memorable for me. Mm. Do you remember? Sorry. Oh, chocolate. Yes. I'm gonna take it. Uh, oh, you need okay. it, you need it. I'm so sorry. I grabbed it. It was so good. Oh boy. I didn't good. know you would be so obsessed with it. It's really So, do you remember the first time I ever had this tea? No, I don't. If you remember the first time I had this tea, I don't know how you would, but maybe I've mentioned it before, and maybe you know that. So leave a comment down below if you remember before I, before I spoil or alert you. But here we go. The first time I had this tea was 2019. I got picked up at the Guangdong airport. And we went to the Guangdong Tea Market. And we were walking around in there. And that's where we had Ying Hong number nine. We had two oh. grades of Ying Hong. And it was amazing. Yeah. I don't remember that much detail. I only know we had tea. I wouldn't remember because I guess it wasn't my first one. That's why. <laughs> so for folks who've never been to the to like a, a tea market in um, there's there's one in there's big these big tea markets in the big okay, cities like Guangdong and uh, Beijing. And just so you don't think it's like a like a, a market here, like my in my hometown, which is a small small town, St. John, New Brunswick. The city market is just one, three aisles of groceries, basically. This is city blocks of tea stores, tea furniture stores, tea ware store, tea merchants selling tea. Like if you're a tea lover, it's like heaven, <laughs> like city blocks of heaven. You just go through these whole malls, these literally these multi-story, three stories of Teaware, tea furniture, tea. I'm missing stuff probably. There's, yeah. um, and when I say tea furniture, I mean tea tables like bigger than the table we're at. Like even when you say tea furniture, I'm like, what's tea furniture? No, oh, I got like it. massive yes. pieces of furniture, not yes. a tea table like yes. this little guy here. No, 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 no. A whole yes. tea table integrated for six, eight, ten, twelve people. They have them all. Absolutely, like heaven. And so we were walking around in there for a while. I had just landed, so I'm jet lagged. I remember and, that. Um, and then Jian Li takes us in to see, to chat, they chat, 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 blah, 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 blah. We go in, it's blah, 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 because I, I don't understand very much, but I'm just following along. I'm like the, the silly Westerner, go in, sit, and sip. And then the questions start from Jian Li. What do you think of the tea? She asked me through Jian. <laughs> and I have to do my tasting notes on the spot, no pressure. <laughs> I, I now remember that. Mm. Yeah, it was neat, huh? Was, yeah. well, I totally I guess. forgot that. I only remember we went there. I didn't know, okay, we drink. This is your first time. Yeah, exactly. I think for you, it's another tea market. It's another day. Mm -hmm. uh, you had already been on the road with your mom for quite some time because um, mm -hmm. I kind of caught up with them in the middle. So they came and got me at the airport and so on and so mm -hmm. on. So for me, it was really fresh, really new, and you yeah. were kind of in working mode already. Yeah, yeah. Not to mention that was my first, I've never been to, I think it's Ditan in Beijing, the, the Beijing. Malian Dok. Uh, Malian Dok. And um, I got it mixed up with the uh, New Year's place. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Ditan has a festival on the first day of the New Year. Mm. Yeah, so anyway, we were, um, it was my first tea market, like of that scale, so I was like, Mind blown, completely. <laughs> so this tea will always have a special place in my heart. And it really stands out. Even mm. as a black tea drinker, you can see how it still has that, like you drink it, you, there's no question that it's a oolong or a green or any, no, it's a black tea. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same as the the traditional black tea taste or something like a special, um, like a compared to uh, cumin or sometimes uh, 
you know, like Baling Kung Fu. I feel like this really stands out for its uh, different taste. And even though I always uh, think about uh, Yunnan black tea, like uh, Dian Hong, but uh, I'm also very conscious that I can taste something different mm -hmm. than Yunnan black tea. Like uh, there's no question, this is not a Yunnan black tea. Yeah, yeah, it really has a, a it made it. It kind of has its own, occupies its own space mm. in the black tea spectrum. More floral mm. than Yunnan black tea. Mm, yes. Right. Yeah. Mm. I'll have another smell of that lid. That lid was divine. Mm. Oh, sorry. I, I just wanted to see because uh, previously, before I started, because we reboil the, like, get the new water and get it boil and stuff, it takes a while. So the temperature is, um, oh, is it lower. Hot? Oh, it's lower. Yeah. It's not yet hot, but uh, the very just now that's. That's so interesting to you. If you want to know the floral we're talking yeah. about, make sure you take a smell of the guy one. Mm. It's got this uh, really lovely floral. I get like chocolatey. Yeah, because after I say floral, I was like, if it's not on top of, it's very not the first thing I think of this tea as a floral. Just mm. to when it compared with other teas, mm. I suddenly feel like that floral nose and jump out. Yeah, yeah. It had a moment of nutty, I think that's what. We nutty? Smell. Yeah. Mm. Ew, a little bit more. Here you go. Thank you. This is quite floral. Gentle, but floral. Mm. And sweet. Sweet Our, type of a floral. Yeah, maybe a little more floral than the, than the dry one. Mm. The dry one for me had a, like a different, it was heavier. The dry one wasn't over it for a Yeah, it was more chocolatey yes. for me. Um, That's what I mean by nutty, I guess. Mm. Mm. I even got a little leaf in there. How is that? Should be really tender. No, really good, really tender. And um, not bitter. Not bitter. Which I'm a little surprised. Usually the leaf is a little more punchy. Yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> don't know if this is too much information, folks, but I really chewed it up. Like I really, mm, good for you. A little fiber with your tea. <laughs> I, I don't well, know. I'm on camera too. I can't. I'm a little bit dizzy with your little... <laughs> Like I can't do the uh, the regular left and right swing. <laughs> oh, is it? Am I doing that too much? I don't think I'm doing that too much. No, really, not like what I did. It's just a little bit. I'm like, I feel a little bit dizzy. I don't know why. But somebody <laughs> at my peripheral vision is like, mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> oh, that hit the spot. Yeah. As we got quieter and quieter, you can see this is a natural wind up to the end of a video. That's usually how we wind down. Hmm. Usually like we're just yeah. chill and yeah. just we say, all right, we're going to keep on brewing, but yeah. we're going to say goodbye. It tastes quite different than the first. Like every infusion has some changes, but they're consistent, but changes. Mm -hmm. So that's very interesting. And as you know, I run out of words and a brand power. Yeah, I would say the um, it's getting this this sort of the Yunnan's coming out a little more oh, as really? we proceed. I don't know. I feel like it's. I feel the opposite. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. And I feel like the the roasty that uh, flavor that I caught that. Close to roasty, but not quite roasty flavor is no more pronounced in this. Well, that settles it, guys. You gotta try some of this and, and figure out which it is. Mm. And the plum. The plum shows more. Yes, so for me, the plum. Uh, you see what I'm coming from? I see why okay, you were okay, saying good. that. Because okay. that's what I'm getting is more of that plum, more of that, that and it's uh, really like the presence. Mm. It doesn't have the zing anymore. 
It has the plum. It has that plum, but don't have that zing, which the. <laughs> you know, I, I, that's exactly what I'm I was thinking. But you know, the Yunnan you know, one gave me that zing, zing, zing. Mm. Mm. I felt like it had that. Oh, okay. I know we're just. But it's different. Well, this thing is very like interesting. How different we are. Like I even uh, mm. today we're talk about how different we understand salt level. It's not consistent. Salt level, yeah. Yes, something and he tasted was uh, not salty. I feel like it was super salty. Often, yeah. Right, and sometimes he feel like something was a perfect salt level. I feel like it wasn't. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah, we have this similar rift with tartness, like not uh, tart even. Not even a rift. We actually have a really different. Sugar is consistent though. Sugar is pretty steady, yeah. Mm. Mm. Just to say, so this is interesting because it comes down to using words to describe flavors and even just your mm -hmm. actual understanding of what the flavor is. Mm -hmm. We both are in the zone of tart. It's that acidic sort of result, but mm. how we perceive it and when you start to split the hairs, fruit tart versus vinegar tart versus this tart, yeah. these are all tart, but they're very different styles of tart. Yeah. Yeah. Which, as you said, this tea doesn't have any of. I have to say that it's one thing it doesn't have. Well, another wild and meandering tea tasting. <laughs> Ying Home number nine. Um, a spectacular black tea. Mm. Spectacular and very interesting. Mm. Like I think unique. Like unique. Yes, mm. a, a black tea lover wouldn't feel this is not black tea or too out of. Oh, a, on the contrary, right. black tea lovers love this tea. Right. And all of the black tea lovers right. who we've talked to have raved about this tea. Mm, mm. And um, if you want to try something a little bit more interesting than a traditional black tea, mm -hmm. this is a very. This is gonna be right up your alley. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well. Ah. Uh, Noah. That's good. Yeah, well, uh, that wraps it up. We're going to probably do a few more infusions, but we're going to say bye for now. Um, if you uh, like the video, please give us a thumbs up. It really helps the channel. And let me know if you have those moments when you have tea and be relaxed and your yeah, yeah. brain is just white out. If you didn't like the video, please still give it a thumbs up and leave us a comment down below and tell us why so we can make it better next time. And if you really have to, you can still hit that other one. I don't care. It's up to you. But please uh, do something. And um, click the notify bell so that yeah. you'll know whenever we make new content. Uh, check out this tea. It's in the links down below along with many of, uh, not many, all of the other teas on our website. Um, grab yourself some tea and uh, until next time. Keep steeping. Keep steeping.